Hello Chinese viewers, I am DS, a psychologist, and welcome to another episode on Channel Need. In this episode, we are going to answer a question that one of our viewers have posted. So one of our viewers asked how an ENTJ may control SI and how the ENTJ may actually study. I do not know how to pronounce this viewer's name, so I will not make an attempt at all. But from the message, I presume that the viewer must be a student currently. So let me address the first part of this query. How does an ENTJ control SI? Technically, an ENTJ doesn't control SI. Why? Because SI is not in the cognitive stack of the ENTJ at all. The ENTJ's inferior function is FI. So most of the time, I may have to control my FI. So if I ever need to control a cognitive function, it is either SE or FI, more so for FI. So in terms of SE, I might go out of control if I start to indulge in a particular activity, such as eating. But FI is more serious because in my everyday life, I get into contact with a lot of strangers. So there are people who walk too slow, there are people who walk while they are on the phone and in such a way that I cannot bypass on either side. So there are people who queue for an ATM. So after inserting the ATM card, they will now do another transaction with another ATM card or they have a lot of passbooks to update. That really irritates the hell out of me because very inconsiderate. My FI might act up. Sometimes I imagine myself hitting the person. <laughs> so there are a lot of times I need to control my SE and FI. But to control SI, hmm, unheard of. Generally, SI doesn't really pose a huge problem to me. When I need to learn something and I try to memorize the steps, sooner or later it just becomes part of my robotic memory or muscle memory. So the question posed by the viewer may seem to be a little bit unclear at the end. So I am trying to figure what this viewer is trying to say. Are you trying to say that, hey, as a student, you need to submit assignments, you need to uh, study, you need to do this and that. How do you prioritize or how do you study? I'm not too sure. But in the case of an ENTJ, when I remember in my past, I just always have time. So how does that work? Make yourself busy, then you will do better. Seems like a paradox. So when I was in university, I had so many CCAs that I practically had no time for rubbish. I don't have time to watch TV. I don't have time for rest. So all my time is very effectively used. I think for a lot of students, they waste time doing this and that, dilly-dallying and then uh, watching this. Sometimes they give themselves a break doing some YouTube things. And then uh, they might watch TikTok. All this kind of uh, time I never had because I was so busy doing a lot of activities. So when I ever get down to studying, it is very effective. So for this viewer, while I do not know what the exact problem is because it is unclear to me in your message, I think that one of the things that you could do if you are thinking of how to study more effectively is to give yourself no time at all. I am not too sure how it works for you, but try to cut yourself off all the unproductive activities. Back in my schooling days, I was really very, very motivated. Studying is something that I really enjoy doing, but now I am not very competent in it anymore. I think your brain needs to be young and receptive to want to accept more information. So as an ENTJ, I'm very receptive of learning, but when I am old, of course, the mental capacity is really not there. So now that you are young, you are in the best time to learn more. So you will cherish it. Anyway, this is my interpretation of your query. If next time you have this opportunity, you can give an ENTJ more details. So anyway, in general, this is very true. If you want to ask an ENTJ for advice or an opinion, you need to supply the ENTJ with context and a lot of information so that the ENTJ can visualize and envision how things could work better for you. So in that regard, an NE user who asks an ENTJ question can actually frustrate the ENTJ. This is because NE users tend to supply information all over the place instead of packing them together into a meaningful whole. So it is very difficult for the ENTJ to come to help the NE user. Anyway viewers, regardless of whether you are an ENTJ or otherwise, if you have a question about the ENTJ, do feel free to put in the comment section and we will try to make a video out of it. Okay, at Channel Need, we produce a lot of ENTJ related videos such as this one. If you've enjoyed and not subscribed, do consider subscribing so that we can bring you more ENTJ, MBTI and fun stuff. This is a very short episode. We're going to sign off now and look forward to see you in our next episode. Bye bye.